Welcome to the Inspirational Living Podcast. For unique fashion and gifts, don't forget to check out our website, bookofzen.com. Each item includes one of my original sayings, inside a Zen and So circle, and all sales go to support this podcast. Today's reading was edited and adapted from Wisdom and Destiny by Maurice Matterlink, published in 1906. In every age there should be some people who dare to speak, and to think, and to act as though all people were happy. For otherwise, when the day comes for destiny to throw open to all people the garden of the promised land, what happiness shall the others find there? What justice, what beauty or love? It may be urged, it is true, that it is best, first of all, to consider our most pressing needs, yet this is not always wisest. It is often better to seek, from the start, that which is highest. When the floodwaters threaten the home of a farmer in Holland, there is a pressing need to safeguard one's own cattle and grain. But the wisest farmer races to the top of the dike, summoning all neighbors, and thus meet the flood in due battle. Humanity up to now has been like an invalid tossing and turning on a couch in search of rest, and yet the words of genuine consolation have come only from those who spoke as though humanity were freed from all pain. For as we all were created for health, so were we created for happiness. And to speak of humanity's misery only, though that misery be everywhere and seem everlasting, is only to say words that fall lightly and soon are forgotten. Why not speak as though humankind were always on the eve of a great certitude, of a great joy? By doing so, we are led by our finest instincts, though we never may live to behold the long-wished-for tomorrow. It is well to believe that we need but a little more thought, a little more courage, love, and devotion to life, a little more eagerness, and one day the portals of joy and of truth will be flung wide open. Let us hope that one day all people will be happy and wise, and though this day may never dawn, to have hoped for it cannot be wrong. Regardless of what may come, it is helpful to speak of happiness to those who are perpetually gloomy, so at least they may learn what happiness means. Some people are ever inclined to regard happiness as something beyond them, extraordinary, out of their reach. But if all who may count themselves happy were to tell, very simply, what it is that brought happiness to them, the others would see that between sorrow and joy, the difference is but as between a cheerful, enlightened acceptance of life and a hostile, gloomy submission, between a large and harmonious view of life, and one that is stubborn and narrow. Thus they may see that they too have the elements of happiness within them. Surely they do have it within them, though they may not be ready yet to embrace that fact. There lives not a person who does not have it within them, except perhaps those upon whom a great physical calamity has fallen. Speak not lightly of this happiness, for there is no other. The happiest person is the one who best understands their happiness, for they above all are most fully aware that it is only the lofty idea the untiring, courageous human idea that separates gladness from sorrow. 
Of this idea it is helpful to speak, and as often as politeness permits. Not with the view of imposing your own idea upon others, but in order that they who may listen shall little by little build the desire to possess an idea of their own. For in no two people is it the same. The idea that you cherish may well bring no comfort to me, nor shall all your eloquence touch the hidden springs of my life. My needs must be met on my own, in myself, by myself. But you unconsciously make this easier for me by telling me of the idea that is yours. It may happen that I shall find solace in that which brings sorrow to you, and that which to you speaks of gladness may be fraught with affliction for me. But no matter, into my grief will enter all that you saw of beauty and comfort, and into my joy there will pass all that was great in your sadness, if indeed my joy be on the same plane as your sadness. It behooves us, first of all, to prepare in our soul a place of some loftiness where this idea may be lodged, just as the priests of ancient religions laid the mountain peak bare and cleared it of thorn and root for the fire to descend from heaven. There may come to us any day from the depths of divine inspiration the infallible formula of happiness, revealing the final answers as to the aim and the government of the universe. But such a formula could only bring change or advancement in our spiritual life to the degree of the desire and expectation of advancement in which we already have been living. The formula would be the same for all people yet each person would benefit only in proportion to the eagerness, unselfishness, and wisdom that they had already stored up in their soul. All morality, all study of justice and happiness, should truly be no more than a preparation, a way of gaining experience, a stepping stone laid down for what is to follow. Surely the desirable day of all days is the one when at last we should live in absolute truth, in immovable logical certitude. But in the meantime, it is given us to live in a truth more important still, the truth of our soul and of our character. And as many wise men and women have already proved, this life can be lived well even after making the gravest errors. Forget the mysteries and enigmas of life. Do not let them perplex you. Our life must be lived to the fullest now. And the happier, the nobler your life, the more vigorous shall it become. You shall have more courage, clear-sightedness, and boldness to seek and desire the truth. And happen what may, your time can never be ill-spent when acquiring some knowledge of yourself. Whatever our relation may become to this world in which we live, in our soul there will yet be more feelings, more passions, more secrets unchanged and unchanging than there are stars that connect with the earth or mysteries fathomed by science. In the bosom of truth undeniable, truth all-absorbing, we shall doubtless soar upwards. But still, as we rise, still shall our soul unerringly guide us, and the grander the truth of the universe, the more solace and peace it may bring, the more shall the problems of justice, morality, happiness, love, present to the eyes of all people the image they have ever worn in the eyes of the thinker. 
we should live as though we were always on the eve of a great revelation. And we should be ready with a welcome, with the warmest and keenest and fullest, most heartfelt and intimate welcome. And whatever form it shall take on the day it comes to us, the best way of all to prepare is to crave for it now, to desire it as lofty, as perfect, as vast, as ennobling as the soul can conceive. It must be more beautiful, glorious, and ample than the best of our hopes. For where it differs or even frustrates them, it must of necessity bring something nobler and loftier, for it will bring us the truth. Those with such a lofty vision have above all faith in the idea of the universe. They are satisfied that every effort that tends to improvement approaches the secret intention of life. They are taught by the failure of their noblest endeavors to discover a new fresh reasons for wonder, for ardor, for hope. As you climb up a mountain towards nightfall, the trees and the houses, the steeple, the fields and the orchards, the road and even the river will gradually dwindle and fade and at last disappear in the gloom that steals over the valley. But the threads of light that shine from the houses and pierce through the blackest of nights, these shine on undimmed. And every step that you take to the summit reveals but more lights and more in the hamlets asleep at your foot. For light is perhaps the one thing of all that yields not as it faces eternity. Thus it is with our moral light too, when we look upon life from a lofty, joyful elevation. The Inspirational Living Podcast is a production of The Living Hour. Learn how our Majesty Meditation Program can help you achieve greater mindfulness, abundance, happiness, and more. Visit livinghour.org slash majesty and use the coupon code INSPIRATION for a 30% discount. Thanks for listening. I look forward to talking with you next time.